welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to uh, episode 29. Let me just put that here. Ah, I'm not organized. Ah, and I need to keep it short because my wife is making lunch and this is the way for me to keep it short because if I don't keep it under 15 minutes, then my lunch is going to be cold. <laughs> so this is a new thing that we're trying. So, welcome to Bliss and Tell, episode 29 already. Ooh, um, time goes by so quickly. So, um, let's uh, get started. Um, so, highlights of the week. Um, well, I have one big one. I don't have many. I had a very slow start to the week because um, we were on this boat trip on Sunday. And, I mean, it's always like complete mayhem and debauchery <laughs> especially for me because um, uh, I drank too much and uh, so I needed Monday to recover I, I'd already scheduled to take Monday off because you know like yesterday actually the 1st of July is a public holiday in Hong Kong it's handover day when um, okay I need to make sure I don't say anything stupid because my wife will mock me for for, for the rest of the weekend so I think it's the day when uh, Hong Kong went back to China, when, when the UK, when England gave it back, I think. Uh, so but anyway, I, work, I worked on Friday and then I said I'll just take Monday off, you know, I'll just switch. And uh, we did, but then I ended, kind, of, kind of ended up taking Tuesday off as well because, uh, well, spent Monday in the city actually. I got my hair did. I said to my hairdresser, I want to look like Robin Wright, but yeah, it's a bit short. <laughs> I know I don't look like Robin Wright. I didn't actually say that because he doesn't know who Robin Wright is. I'm absolutely sure. I would have to take a picture in with me and I don't know. I, I wouldn't do that. So uh, anyway, um, so w when I, I, I actually only started writing this week on Thursday. But I did manage to get 10,000 words done this week because yesterday, so on the 1st of July, I wrote 6,000 words. Oh, it was amazing because it's been a while since I did that. You know, I used to, like, you know, when I, back when I still had my crazy plan, I needed to have a couple of 6,000 days at the least when writing a book, right? Because, you know, you need to get, you need to progress very quickly. But I stopped putting that kind of pressure on myself. But there's just something about it. A ten thousand, uh, a six thousand word day, and it was completely exhausted. Like my brain was empty, but uh, it's sort of like a high. I don't know. It's it can't compare it to anything else, and um, so that was fun. And then this morning I added another two thousand, and then on Thursday I did my two thousand. So um, you know I'm up to forty thousand words now in the book, and uh, I don't know There's something about this book because I mean I would say. I would say it, it comes pouring out like, you know, like straight from my heart or something. But, you know, these characters, you know, this, these are not things that that are, you know, that I've experienced or anything. So I don't know. But it's going really well and um, I'm so happy with it. And uh, I can't wait for you to read it. Well, it's only going to come out in September. I have another book coming out before that. So anyway. The book is fully on track. Of course, now you know. Now that I've had a six thousand word day, I want another because that's just how it is. And I'm actually like secretly hoping, but not so secretly anymore now because I'm I'm saying it here, to finish it by the end of next week. So, but that means I would need to write twenty thousand words in one week. There we go again. That would that would mean me going back to my crazy ways of, of wanting to write so much that, you know, it burns me out. Uh, although I do think now that it's not like writing a lot that burns me out. I think it's not taking enough time in between books and, you know, like Joanna Penn says, refill the creative, uh, replenish the, the creative well. So um, anyway, also I'm not sure this book is, is going to be a 60,000 word book. I think I may need a, a little bit more words to to finish it all off but I will see all of that next week anyway it's going well so that was my massive uh, highlight of the week also of course when I say that I didn't write it does, doesn't mean I didn't work right I did a lot of uh, behind the scenes uh, technical stuff was working on some 
things with my mailing list, setting up something new on my website, some marketing stuff, you know, all of that. You know, I, I do work when I'm not writing. I just can't be writing uh, all the time. And there's a, there's a lot of other stuff to do. So, um, but all in, I was slow start to the week, but then it ended good. So what else do we have? Oh yeah, I got this new keyboard. Look at that. It's so ugly. But, um, because it's a Microsoft keyboard, but um, yeah, I got it because you know, I type like this, you know, two fingers, tuk, 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 tuk. it's so hard on the wrists, and there's no support and any of that. So, uh, you know, I, 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 I mean, yeah, typing is, is what I do mainly. I know I said I was gonna learn dictation, and I should, but I haven't gotten on to that yet. So, uh, at, now you know, I still type, I type. I type a lot, 6,000 words yesterday, you know, it's very straining uh, on the wrists. So, uh, you know, I thought I'd, I'd get this keyboard, but obviously, you know, I mean, I can have a keyboard and still, I can have a keyboard like this and still type like this, right? So what's the point? So the point is to rest my, support my wrists while I type, which means I have to ideally learn how to type blind and I've, I've been learning very 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 slowly this week it's so hard because automatically you just start I, I just start typing with two fingers again because I'm so used to it so um, yeah it's gonna be a slow process but you know I notice small improvements tiny tiny improvement every day because I practice every day a little bit so uh, I hope maybe by the time I start writing my next book I can uh, you know type most of it blind which is definitely not the case yet now. I can't, when I'm, when I'm writing my first draft, I can't do any of it blind yet. I practice when I write emails, for instance, so it takes me five minutes to write one email, whereas before it would, would have taken me one. <laughs> so um, anyway, I think it's a good investment for the future, you know, think about my wrists. So anyway, and then of course, um, Yes, there is the, the minor issue of having gotten up at 3 a.m. last night to watch the Belgium football play, a team play, and then they lost. Oh, my God. <laughs> Fucking assholes. <laughs> I thought, what the fuck? I got up at 3 a.m. We set the alarm, and it was so hard. Oh, I was so fast asleep. And I, I, I debated with myself. I was like, oh, should I really get up? But then I did, and... Oh, they lost. They played so badly. Oh, I, I think Wales definitely won deservedly. You know, I mean, I was like, kind of secretly, secretly rooting for them because they were being like so. They were being. They were playing well. You know, plus also now I don't have to get up at three a.m. anymore because the semi-final is on Thursday. If I could not face another time getting up at three a.m. It's just it screws with my system so much because you know. I need to, I, I get up early, but 3 a.m. is way too early. You know, I, I usually wake up maybe 5, 5.36. So then I like to get up and, you know, start writing early. Because if I don't start writing early, I know it's not going to be the best day. And when I have to get up at 3 a.m., then go back to bed, wake up at 8 or something, or even 9 like this morning, because it's Saturday, right? So, um, yeah, that, that's not good for me. So I will not be watching the semi final. Sorry Wales, sorry Portugal, I'm rooting for Wales now. Although they, ugh, they beat us, but yeah, deservedly so. So that was not so much fun. Um, but you know, it's a game, you know, as Caroline said, it's just men kicking a, kicking a ball on, on a lawn, you know, what the fuck? Who even cares? But I know a lot of people care about that. But usually I never watch football. I don't follow any of that, you know, so, um, Anyway, that was not so much fun. So, oh yeah, then, yeah, because like, well, now we have the office, we don't have the Lady Lit HQ anymore. So I've been doing a lot of back and forth, like moving out the last of the stuff. We should, um, theoretically, we had the keys until uh, the 30th of June, but we still have them for a couple more days. So we need to move out all of our shit. And, but now I don't go into the office anymore in the afternoon so I'm home all day so which is like a little bit like I need to find a groove again um, 
but like what I do after lunch is um, you know I lie down put my I have these I have these uh, I have a sleeping mask with headphones in them put that on listen to an audiobook so I, I think I already said I've been listening to Lolita and it's narrated by Jeremy Irons which is like the best thing ever of oh, Jeremy Irons voice and then book I never read it because you know I, don't, I thought it was like extremely highbrow when I started reading it but oh, it's so good especially told by Jeremy Irons and then like yesterday I was I listened to it I think for a full hour over lunch uh, you know just like relaxing usually I fall asleep but I didn't fall asleep this time and uh, then afterwards you know when I was writing like while I was writing I could like hear the words being narrated by Jeremy Irons in my head it was amazing I don't know maybe I was high already but that was pretty great and kind of like a writing hack because the writing went so well usually afternoon it's not my prime time for writing especially I'd already done like 4,000 words in the morning needed to do another 2,000 in the afternoon it's usually hard you know it's it's a slog to get those extra 2,000 words done but like after listening to Lolita I was like oh my god I could, this is going so well you know although my wife re read the chapter that I wrote yesterday and she said maybe a little bit hyperbolic dear <laughs> I said but that's my style <laughs> so anyway uh, do I have anything else I don't think so uh, next week well, I'll be doing more writing next week I have a book pop ad it's on Friday so if you have not read once in a lifetime it's gonna go on sale I think probably Wednesday or Thursday it's gonna be 99 cents so it would be a good chance to snap that up so now some quick questions oh, okay this is a question from Donna and it is is it true Hong Kong is difficult for lesbians actually I prepared the answer to this question last week but I didn't have time and um, now I forgot what I wrote so I'll just wing it <laughs> so well I think the answer is yes and no and also I think it depends who you ask I mean Carol and I we are expats in Hong Kong you know and um, we, we live in this like really gay bubble like 90 percent of our friends are gay and and the ones that are not are like allies and like you know they, they hang out with the gays as well you know like most of our social life is with gays so in that respect you know for us it's not an issue but then on the other hand you know our our marriage is not recognized so um so which which does have administrative uh, repercussions which are a little bit annoying but I won't go into detail but you know there is definitely discrimination in Hong Kong but you know I'm an expat you know in the end it doesn't it doesn't matter that much to me but I think for for local uh, local girls local women coming out is very difficult I think a lot of uh, Chinese families with uh, LGBT children they have the, the don't ask don't tell policy like you know they know but but it is not talked about although I, I hope I can only hope that is changing like very slowly I've, I've also heard about like this mostly in China when when like gay men and lesbian wom women um, they, they meet up and, and they marry you know like they have a straight marriage because there is so much pressure on, uh, on Chinese and, and Hong Kong um, children to get married you know it's uh, so in that I, in that respect it's definitely not easy you know this is not this is not a western country there is a there is a lot to be fought for uh, in hong kong so um let me see mm, what else though i don't think it's it's definitely not like a safety issue like like caroline and i i often you know just i hold her hand when we're out in public just because not not just because I feel like it, although I do, but also just because you know I said I want them to see you know that two women can hold each other's hand. But then again, I mean, it is not it is not an an uncommon sight. It would be much more uncommon if it was two men holding hands because like a lot of women, like like mother and daughter, they would often walk around holding hands in Hong Kong. So but or like I don't know maybe even sisters and stuff like like we often see like like two Chinese women holding hands and then we're always like mm -hmm, what do you think what do you think is your gaydar pinging and often it's not you know it's just family it's like it's like a thing like uh, yeah two women are holding hands so um, 
but like we, we would never fear for our safety because Hong Kong is one of the safest places, uh, definitely probably the safest place that I've ever been to. You know, it's, it's I mean, not that there is no crime or, or, or any form of assault, but um, it, it's not uh, it, it's not not a, not that big an issue as it is in in, uh, in some other places. Hong Kong is no issue at all to walk around anywhere after dark. Well, it gets dark so early anyway. Like in the middle of the night, for instance, you know, like so. You don't have to fear that you're gonna get assaulted uh, for for walking around hand in hand with your girlfriend. Though um, being a lesbian in, in in Hong Kong culture is is definitely not uh, not very well accepted. So in that respect, it is pretty hard, and there's a lot a lot of work to be done here. So um, yeah, I hope that uh, answers your question. Let me see if I had any other words of wisdom written down. Mm, I, don't know, I don't think so. So, plus, you know, yeah, there's a lot of influence by a small Christian group in legislation. Like any time, some pro LGBT legislation le legislation could be passed. This like small group of Christians, you know, like fanatic Christians, they they start applying pressure, and then you know it doesn't get passed. It's the same thing every time. So, you know. Fuck them, right? So, uh, yeah. I guess the summary is, I mean, it's not, it could be, it could be much worse, but it can always be worse, right? But it could definitely also be much, much, much better, you know, like in Belgium, so much easier, right? So much more uh, liberal in Belgium. So, um, yeah, okay. I hope that answers your question. Oh, I was going to keep it short. Let's try and keep it under 20 minutes. So I'll do one more quick question. From Gert, Gert from Belgium. Hello, <laughs> hello. So the question is: Do you think that the sales figures of the audiobook *Seasons of Love* are encouraging enough for Tantor Media or another publisher to consider a new audio project? Okay, well, that's an excellent question, Gert. It's one I ask myself at least once a week. Um, but of course, I don't have access to sales figures of the audiobook. I mean, I followed it on, uh, on Amazon a little bit when it came out. The ranking seemed quite good to me. It, it popped up in the top 100 a couple of times. So um, I'm, it did make a few sales. I, don't, I really have no idea how many. And um, it's been out now how long? How long? Two months? So I, I think I only get a royalty statement. <laughs> Working with traditional publishing, it's like hallucinating. I think, I don't know when I get a royalty statement, uh, but actually I have absolutely no idea. And I have been thinking about contacting them, you know, because I want more audiobooks. I mean, I, people really seem to, to enjoy them. So, and if not with them, I would definitely approach um, other publishers, like approach them myself. I think there is a, a lesbian uh, audiobook producer out there that I've got my eye on, that I might want to contact, so, but yeah, your guess is as good as mine, Gert, um, so uh, it's, it's definitely something that's been occupying me, so I should maybe spring into action and contact uh, Tantor and see what they think, you know, because when they approached me the first time, they did say that they wanted to expand their, uh, their lesbian erotic romance, or just romance uh, catalogue, so, I don't know what their uh, criteria are for uh, for starting new projects. So I th the only way I can know is to ask. So I shall ask, and then I'm sure as soon as I hear something, I will get back to you. So uh, thank you for your question and reminding me to do this. <laughs> um, so, but if they're not interested, I will definitely pursue with uh, with another publisher. So uh, yes. Okay, I had another question lined up, but I'm not gonna do it because my lunch is gonna be cold <laughs> and I'm hungry. It's like 20 past two and I haven't had lunch. And uh, that's that's what waking up at 3 a.m. does to you, you know, it fucks everything up. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, I hope you have a good weekend. I think in the US it's a long weekend, right? Fourth of July. So um, send me more questions. 
Thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you next week. Peace out.